Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys what I packed and also giving you guys tips for traveling internationally with kids during coronavirus. I'm so excited for today's video. That means we are packing and getting ready for a trip to go to the States. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stacy, and here my channel is all about being a wife, a mom to four boys, living overseas, and I love talking about all things homeschool. Today's video is going to be about traveling. With living overseas, we end up traveling quite a bit. So we are from the States originally, but we live in Cambodia, and we have traveled back and forth quite a few times. Each time has been with kids, so I have experience with kids ages six and down. So if you're looking for tips and tricks, then you're watching the right video. Please smash that thumbs up button if this video helps you out. So I am sitting here in front of our map that's on our wall. I don't know if you can see there, you can see it. And, and I also have our luggage here around me. And so I am going to first of all show you guys what we packed and talk about that a little bit. And then after that, I'll give you guys some tips and tricks when traveling with kids. I am filming this after my kids are in bed, so if the lighting is kind of yellow, it's because our living room lights are kind of yellow. Uh, and you also may hear the neighbors. They're, we have like windows that are open year-round here, and so you can hear like the kids and the neighbors' music and stuff. Um, my kids are all sleeping in bed upstairs. So I went ahead and packed this stuff a couple days early so I could film this video in time to edit it before we leave. Also, when you're packing for a big international trip like this, you don't want to wait till last minute. I like to pack a couple days early, that way if we forget something, um, it's not as stressful the day you're leaving because you want to do everything you can to keep that day stress-free. <laughs> So when you're flying internationally, your flights tend to be longer. For us, going from Cambodia to the States, I think our total flight time this time is around 30 or 31 hours. That does not count uh, traveling to the airport and traveling away from the airport, like on the very end. I'm just talking from the time we arrive at the airport to we arrive at our destination airport. So if you figure, if you add on the extra time, I think it comes out to like 33, 34 hours, depending. No matter how you look at it, that's a long trip. So every time I've traveled so far, I've either been pregnant or breastfeeding, and what has been the make or break it deal for me as the mom is how much sleep I get. So it's really crucial to try to get some sleep while you're traveling, and I'd say that is like key. So this bag right here is my carry-on backpack, and I have like all the baby supplies. I'm going to be flying with a nine-month-old and a two-year-old, and then also six-year-old twins. And I keep the baby supplies, and I keep the baby supplies and also the two-year-old stuff in here and a little bit of my stuff, and this will stay at my feet. That way if I need something, I can quickly pull it out. If the baby's sleeping on my lap, I don't have to get up and get out all the time. And then also I have a carry-on suitcase down here with wheels that I will have like a change of clothes in and extra stuff that I shouldn't need like all the time, but I may need access to sometimes. And then this bigger one back here is gonna be a check-in. And this one has all my stuff and the baby and the two-year-old's clothes in it, everything that we'll need. And then part of living internationally, you often haul stuff back and forth for friends, teammates, or just acquaintances. And so the two bottom totes here, both are for a teammate, and this is her stuff for taking back to the States with us. We found it really well to take totes because they're not heavy. You can fit a lot of stuff inside. When you get a suitcase, more like this one over here, you have a lot of extra weight just because it's hard and it's got the wheels and everything on it, which is really nice to push through the airport, but um, it does add extra weight. You can't fit as much stuff inside. So these type here, you can fit more in. You get to that 50 pounds, not quite as fast. And then what my husband does, he drills holes in the lip here and we put ties in it what are they called i don't know i forget what they're called leave a comment down below in the comment section reminding me what they're called zip ties that's what they're called and another part of living internationally is you often end up wanting to take gifts back for family members so that's what is in this tote we got like material and a bunch of other stuff that i want to take back and this one here is a tote that just has like a clip here you can close and then my husband put one zip tie in the hole in the lid so we still put a tag in it and then for these here too, we put tags just on, we tape them just on the lid um, with our address on it. That way, just in case it gets lost in transportation. So our four kids and my husband and I will be flying together to the States. When we get to the States, we're going to be splitting for one week. I'm going to go see my sister and then I'll go and join my husband. So the way we packed all of our stuff is that me and the two little boys who are going with me, our stuff is all packed together. And then my husband and the twins, their stuff is all packed together. That way it's easy for us to go to our different destinations. And also when we're on the plane with our carry-ons, that way if we need an extra sweater or something, extra set of clothes, we know easily what which one to go to. It's very organized that way. All right, so I'm gonna turn the camera around now and show you guys what I packed. I'm gonna show you guys mostly what I packed for the kids. I think usually when we watch these kind of videos, we kind of already know as adults what to pack, but it's more when we're looking for ideas and stuff what to pack for our kids. If you're getting value from this video, remember to click on that thumbs up button. It helps me out. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna show you guys what I have in this backpack that'll be at my feet. And so these are things that I would know I want access to 
and I don't want to have to get up and like bother other people going in and out. So as I was laying this out on the floor here for you guys, I thought about there's a, three things that I know that I don't have in here that I will be adding. One is we have an old cell phone that we're going to download a couple of games on it. Um, and then wireless headphones and wireless earbuds. If I'm holding a baby in my lap, I really like wireless ones so he's not always grabbing the cord. And the third thing is the charger for my phone. Usually they have USB ports on the airplane and so it's easy to charge your phone. We do not pack any headphones for our boys. We just use the ones that they give you on the plane because then it's less stuff for us to have to worry about packing. And you also see we don't have any like tablets for our boys because we don't have any. It's one less thing to pack and they just can use the screens all that are on the airplane. Okay, so starting over here, this bag, I pack all of these here activities in it. That way when the boys come to me saying they're bored and they want an activity to do, I can hand them the bag. It's easy to just pull right out of my backpack and say, here, pick one thing out of here. And then before they can get another activity, they have to return the first one. So what I have in there is, here's two water wells, and they, you use these here, put, just put water inside, and it's mess-free, and they paint. Um, and you, when you paint, it changes color underneath, and then when it dries, it turns back to white again, and each page has stuff you gotta find. And so these are really fun. These here are three activity books. This one here is more like a sticker book for my two-year-old, and then these here are more like da-da-da -da -da and... Um, yeah, there's all different kinds of activities in there for my six-year-old twin. This here was given to us by Krista. Thank you, Krista. These are for dry erase markers, and they're just full of different activities. And here is the dry erase markers for that. And these here things will just lay in the bottom of this bag. So this here is just a notebook, and I have a couple crayons, not much, and some pens. I don't mind if these things get lost on the plane. That's why I packed old ones. They can draw in here, and I also have stick post-it notes. They can draw on these. And then I also have stickers here, and they can put these stickers in the notebook or sometimes with my two-year-old we like to put them on the window and put post-it notes over top and then say like can you find the tiger or whatever next is chapstick and i like to have definitely have that in my backpack because your lips get so dry on there and i also have tissues just in case okay i should also add that in the side here i have wipes and then diapers for my nine month old and diapers for my two-year-old and then in my bigger carry-on i have extra diapers if i need them i just have some in here so they're right at my feet okay this bag here when we go to the airport it's really warm here in Cambodia, so we'll just wear t-shirts and then this bag i have like t-shirts that have like long sleeves one for me the nine month old and the two-year-old and then three pairs of socks one for each of us also and then my husband will have a bag like this for himself and the twins this is my wallet this is baby powder because when you're flying that long you just never know what's going to happen if a rash is going to come um blankies for my infant my two-year-old i also have i just don't have it here he's sleeping with it right now and then this is a nursing cover this here bag is toys for the nine month old like chewing toys um, tissues this here is for his pacifier i just like traveling with this because it helps to keep his pacifier nice and clean and then these two bags represent snacks and i just don't have them in here yet i like to take extra bags in case like um let's say like a sleeve of oreos you don't eat all of it so you can put it in here so it doesn't go stale oh i think i forgot this this is some new toys i just picked up at like for 75 cents i think it was and this i think will keep my two-year-old really busy and i thought it was a cute little bag the handle already broke on it actually <laughs> but it's just some little cars and if they happen to get lost on the plane it's not a big deal all right so all of that is what will be packed in the backpack that goes at my feet okay so next of all i'll show you what is in this carry-on this is the carry-on that'll go like above my head on the plane in this in this pocket i'll put like my cell phone charger and then inside, I, this is my baby carrier, the Ergo. And I'll probably be wearing this a lot, but when I'm not wearing it, I do have room in here that it can easily just fit in here, which is really nice. Um, the next one, I really like clear bags for traveling because you can easily see what's inside. And we just have like Tylenol, Jemamine, just in case the like, kids get car sick. Um, our melatonin gummies, and then we also have melatonin liquid for the infant, and some Tylenol, a syringe, deodorant, and toothbrushes. They give you toothbrushes on the plane also, but we had some extra ones, so I just threw them in here. So this is just, when you're on the plane flying that long, it's really nice to be able to go in the bathroom and wash your face and put on deodorant, brush your teeth, you feel like a new person again. It's amazing. And so uh, this is just for that. Okay, and then in these packs here, I have change of clothes, and this one is for my nine-month-old and my two-year-old. I think I have two onesies in here for my nine-month-old, plus a sweater and thick PJ pants, so technically three change of outfits for my nine-month-old in there, which we may need. And then my two-year-old, there's two change of outfits in here, and one of them is like a warmer one, and one's like a colder one, because you never know on the plane if it's going to be hot or cold. And then this big pack is like my change of outfit, plus a thick sweater and leggings, just in case it is cold on the plane. You never know also when a kid is going to throw up all over you. <laughs> okay, and then in this pocket, I have a couple extra like gallon size Ziploc bags. This one is just like to put dirty clothes in if we need it, or you never know. There's all kinds, there's always something you need extra 
bags for and then this bag here i have some lotion on planes it often seems like my skin gets super dry if you can see there's a little bit of saran wrap like plastic wrap underneath the lid and this just helps with the pressure when you're up flying um, for the lotion not to like explode and come out just helps save messes i might add another bag or two in there for just in case things all right and so that is what is in this carry-on it's definitely not full i believe in not taking too much with past trips, we often took too much and ended up not using all the things, and so I'd rather pack light and not have to carry all the extra weight. So my husband will also have a carry-on light like this. Okay, and then, and this big guy is gonna be my check-in for me, the baby, and the two-year-old. So it's basically just a bunch of these bags, and I have it divided out between like my clothes, the two-year-olds, and the babies, and then this one here is like bathroom stuff. So yeah, I didn't have quite enough of these packing cubes. I ended up just having to do a stack of clothes, but it's okay. For the most part, it'll stay really organized, hopefully. <laughs> so that's what's in there. All right, I hope that was helpful to see what was inside of our bags. All right, and now I'm gonna give you guys some tips for traveling with babies, toddlers, and young kids. I made a list of notes here on my phone, that way I could um, stay focused. <laughs> so the first one is if you're traveling on a long flight with an infant, book the seats that are right behind the divider, um, especially for the long, long flight because they have little bassinets. If your baby is under a year old, you can get the bassinet and they can sleep in that. Now, the only negatives I've had is if the seatbelt light goes off, you have to physically get your baby out and hold them in your lap with that little seatbelt around them. So when we traveled to Cambodia the first time, our twins were seven months old and we had booked these seats with the bassinets. But unfortunately that flight was really bumpy and so the seatbelt light went off all the time and we had constantly like, having to wake up our babies and get them back out. We'd finally get them back asleep and back in and then the seatbelt light would go off and we'd have to wake them up and get them back out again. We try to keep them asleep, you know, when we're holding them in our laps, but you know how that is with babies. So it can be a pro and a con. If the seatbelt light stays off then, and your baby goes to sleep well, um, then it's really, really nice because they're in that bassinet. Also, if you book seats behind the divider, you have extra leg room between your seat and where the wall is. And so that's really, really nice for having like a backpack sitting at your feet or just to have more room to spread out. Um, just that extra leg room is really nice for my husband because he has really long legs. So even if your baby is over a year old, um, I would still try, I would still recommend booking that one at least for your longest flight. It's definitely worth it. Okay, so my next tip is take a stroller and you can gate check it which means you can take your stroller all the way up until right before you actually get on the airplane, gate check it when you land, then as soon as you get off of the airplane, they'll have your stroller right there ready for you again. It's super nice to be able to put your toddler in it and then also hang a bag or two off of the handles if you need to. For my baby who is nine months old, I take a baby carrier and wear him because that way on the plane, like on the really long flights, I can walk up and down the aisles if I need you to put him to sleep. Also, if I wanna sleep and he's sleeping on me, that way my arms can relax and they don't have to be tense the whole time like holding him in awkward positions and my arms going to sleep. If he's in the baby carrier, my arms are just free and I can like relax more and go to sleep and I don't end up with Sore arms. And here's an experience tip for you. We have an Ergo baby carrier and I can nurse really well in that baby carrier. You also can take car seats if you want to, but you do have to buy an extra ticket, an extra seat so your car seat can fit on that seat. But it is an idea if you wanted to do that. Okay, my next tip is once you get on the plane and get seated, uh, take your wipes and just wipe down some of the main things that your baby would touch. I have a nine month old and he likes to lick everything. And so I just wipe off maybe like the tray and the window and just a couple of things. I don't go completely crazy with this, but right now because of the whole virus thing, it probably would be a doubly good idea. <laughs> okay, my next tip is to dress in layers and take an extra outfit per person, including for mom. You never know when a kid is going to spit up on you, throw up on you, uh, etc. So the culture here in Cambodia is a lot of people like to go along with you to the airport and take selfies and say bye to you, which is kind of fun, but it's really hot and muggy. So if you're dressed too warm, you get sweaty, and that's not fun before you start such a big long journey. So what I like to do is just wear everybody, so what I like to do is just dress everybody in t-shirts, and then in my backpack, like you guys saw, I just have a little thing in here with um, like t-shirts with long sleeves. That way if it's just a little bit chilly on the plane, we have easy access to them. And then in my carry-on, I have thicker sweaters and like sweatpants and stuff for the boys if they need it, and socks. Also, another tip is to take a blankie or a stuffy, like a favorite animal, if your baby and toddler are used to going to sleep with them. My infant and my toddler both have a blankie and we'll be taking both of those along just to help them to be able to relax and sleep as something familiar. 
Okay, and the next tip I have is to have your baby, especially your infant, suck on something while you're going, taking off and landing. That's when the most like ear pressure changes and ear popping is going on. And if you're swallowing during that time, it really can help your ears to pop. If you've ever experienced your ears not popping, it can be really painful, especially for a little infant. You don't want them screaming and screaming on the plane. So when you're taking off and landing, it's really good to have them sucking on something. A couple ideas is just like their passy or if you nurse them or bottle feed them. Even if you do nurse them, just take a bottle and give them a little bit of water to suck on if you wanted. Okay, and then for a child that's a little bit older, like two-year-old or six-year-old, my six-year-old twins, I like to give them a lollipop or encourage them to be swallowing, chewing gum, just drinking while you're taking off and landing. Okay, a really big one is snacks. All kids love snacks, and the type that work really well are snacks that take snacks that take a long time to eat, like peanuts. I think that's why airlines always hand out peanuts. Um, another good one is like Cheerios or just something that has like lots of hand-to-mouth motion, so it takes a while to eat it is a good idea. Stuff that is wrapped individually, it works really well. And we often would do things like Oreos, a sleeve of Oreos, and then I'll take like an extra Ziploc bag, so that way if we only eat a couple, we can put it in Ziploc bags so we don't go stale, and we'll eat them throughout the trip like that. And so one thing our family likes to do is instead of having each person have their own water bottle, it gets to be too much to carry around. We just take one empty plastic water bottle, fill it up at a water fountain once you're there, and then you have that water bottle. If you happen to lose it during the trip, you can always buy another one or replace one. Um, and we get the really big water bottles and our whole family would just share it. That way it's not as much different individual things to carry around. The last time we were flying, we tried giving each of our kids like their own little backpack, their own little water bottle and all that. But because they are still so young, we ended up carrying it and I did not like carrying all those little backpacks. I'd rather just have one big backpack, one big thing of water and everyone share it. I think that's easier when the kids are little. One note along with drinks is for babies or infants, you can take along liquid. Like if you want to take a little bit of milk or a little bit of water to mix with their formula, you can. Um, it, when you go through security, they have to, it might take us a little bit longer for them to check it out but um, we've done it before and yeah, they let it go through. And also on the really, and then along with snacks, also on the really long international flights, you can ask the stewardesses for extra snacks, especially when you get towards the end of the flight and if they know that they have plenty, um, at least in our experience, they'll come and give our kids, if we ask for it, give them an extra snack. But I do think this definitely depends on the different airlines. Okay, and then next on my list, I just have like new, or, new toys or their favorite toys. Um, if they have something they really like to play with and play really well with that or like something new and different can keep them entertained for a while especially like the two-year-old our six-year-old twins they will watch the screens as long as the screen's available when we're traveling we just let them watch pretty much as much as they want as long as they're quiet uh, with the two-year-old he'll watch for a little bit but then he gets over it pretty fast and so i do need to have toys for him so new and different toys is good or a favorite toy that i know he'll play with for a while is a good option and then like a bag of act different activities so you can be swapping things in and out for like your baby and your two-year-old for my six year old, I really don't need much for them to play with because honestly, they'll be fine as long as they have a screen. Okay, another really big tip I have is to be friendly and smile at the stewardesses. You may need them later if a child throws up all over the aisle. This may or may not have happened to me. <laughs> you never know what's gonna happen during that flight and you really want them to be your friend. Okay, the next thing I've written down is sometimes we give the kids half a dose of melatonin to help them sleep on the plane. And you do wanna plan out your trip when you wanna give them the melatonin and when you want them to sleep and when you don't want them to sleep. So for example, if you're gonna be landing in two hours, probably don't give them the melatonin because during that, when you're laying over and need them to walk, they might be really groggy and grumpy and um, that might not work out the best. So just remember to plan it out a bit. And another big tip when you're traveling with kids is to take turns supervising. So my husband and I, one of us will kind of be the one responsible for the kids while the other one kind of sleeps and then we'll swap back and forth. If you're traveling by yourself, I would say to try to get everyone to kind of like sleep at the same time and be awake at the same time, which I know can be really hard. Okay, and that is all I have written down here for tips. I know I'll probably think of more later, but that's all the ones I've written down for now. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, comment down below in the comment section. If you traveled internationally with kids before, I'd love to know what tips and tricks you have. I learned so much from you guys also. So when this video goes up on YouTube, we will be traveling, doing our trip a couple days later. And so if you would like to follow along more in real time, you can follow me on Instagram at Stacey Yoder, and I'm sharing my stories there. I'll be posting some. We are so excited to be going and seeing family and friends in the States. It has been a long time. Um, our two-year-old, who is two, has only been with a lot of our family members for about a week and a half, so they really don't know him, which to me is really sad because he is such a precious little soul and he's got such a fun personality, and it's just sad to me they don't even really know him. So I'm looking forward to him being able to spend more time with them and get to know them and vice versa. And then also, of course, with our infant, who is nine months old, um, only one family member so far had met him, and so I'm really excited for others to meet him.
I thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to follow along on our journey. We'll see you guys again soon. Bye!